What's up, everybody? Welcome to the latest episode of Tokusatsu Thursdays. Today, we're reviewing the horror fantasy film Nightmare Detective, directed by Shinya Sukamoto and starring Ryuhei Matsuda, Hitomi Matsunobu Ando, and Ren Osugi. This movie came out 2007. It's rated. At TVMA and it's an hour and 46 minutes so yeah uh, I just randomly p picked this movie because I, I was just checking the leaving soon section on Tubi and I saw this movie and I, I just randomly asked my friend <laughs> not only all not only Hollywood <coughs> I'm sorry sorry the this the smoke from the Alberta fires it has polluted the air all over Canada. So now I'm coughing like crazy. It took me a while to realize that. <coughs> yeah. So my my boy, not only Hollywood, is such a uh, Asian cinema expert that I can randomly ask him, hey, have you seen this movie? Is it good? And, and he told me, not only has he heard of it, but he even told me he saw it and he was like, yeah, it's a 6 out of 10. Which... <coughs> I kind of disagree, right? So what made me review this movie for Tokusatsu Thursday is because halfway through the movie, I realized that this movie is pretty much like, yes, it's a horror fantasy film, but it's it pretty much has all the storytelling beats of a superhero movie. <laughs> this movie is pretty much like uh, like an emo dark superhero movie. This this movie is so emo that it like it blows the crow out of the water with how emo the movie is. <laughs> right? Oh my god! So the movie is about uh, well, there's like multiple characters. Like the main, uh, well, one of the main characters who's named after the film. Sorry, the movie is named after is uh. Is I forget his name. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe I forget his name. But yeah, it's like it's the guy's pl uh, played by Ryohei Matsuda, if I'm not mistaken, who was in the Raid 2 Brandau as the Yakuza's boss's son, right? And he plays this, he plays this suicidal uh, psychic. Who has the ability to enter people's dreams, right? To help them, to help cure them of their nightmares or whatever, right? Hence why he's called the Nightmare Detective. So the movie starts off with him going into the dream of uh, of this of this uh, fifty or six year old man who's being haunted in his sleep by what turns out to be the ghost of his unborn daughter, right? And he refuses because he hates his life and his sons so much, right? He decides to stay in the dr in the dream and die uh, f die in the catatonic state, right? <coughs> right. And it turns and it turns out um, this happens a lot. And our character not only has the our main character not only has the power to. Uh, go into people's dreams. He also has, he also can look into people's minds and see how effing ugly people are. There's a point where like he looks in the crowd and everybody's mouths suck into their like face and face and it looks like they have asshole asshole mouths <laughs> like like arsh face from fucking preacher man. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. After that, we get introduced to who's probably the main character, Hitomi, who is a female detective who was working for the Japanese version of the FBI. I forget what they're called, right? But uh, decided to join the regular police force be and become a detective because you know she she wants to get more of a hand-on experience, right? And her first case that she gets is what looks like a suicide, right? Of a 20-year-old girl who, in the very beginning of the movie, we know she wasn't, you know, 
Uh, she didn't kill herself, even though she was suicidal and was talking on the phone with the fucking director, uh, Shinya Tsukumoto, right? Who's also wants to kill himself, right? Uh, right. Which Shinya Tsukumoto is not only a famous uh, actor in Japan, but he's also probably uh, he's. I don't know if he's as big as a deal as I think he is, but he, he's a pretty... <coughs> he's directed a lot of cult horror films. Like, like you probably heard of this one, Tetsuo the Iron Man, which which he's like the, proge- he's like the progenitor of cyberpunk body horror movies. And there is body horror in this, in this film, right? Especially during the nightmare scenes, right? And there's also some David Lynch stuff too, or I could be wrong, but I was definitely getting some Lynch vibes from this movie, right? Right. So yeah, um, uh, while investigating the suicide, they realized that sh- that the that the, the 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 girl who killed herself was talking on the phone with somebody, right? And then there's another guy. Who died? Who died in his in his sleep? Right, which also looks like he it was a suicide because you know he was cutting himself all over. Right, um, he was also talking to the same person on the phone. Right, <coughs> so because of how weird the case is, right, the the police chief after consulting a, a senior detective, this. Uh, t- t- tell, uh, tells the team to split it into two teams and have one do uh, on the book official investigation which which is with uh, Ren Usugi uh, is in charge of that Ren Usugi is a famous you know Japanese actor who you've probably seen a lot of t- uh, Takeshi Kitano films right he's a regular with Takeshi Kitano and he's also been in Takeshi Miike films as well and he was also the prime minister in the Shin Godzilla movie, which I felt he was kind of wasted in this movie. He didn't really, uh, besides from giving the Hitomi, uh, Detective Kirishima, a hard time, uh, which I think that's Hitomi. I'm assuming. <laughs> I don't fucking know. Uh, to, like, uh, I'm I, I'm just looking at the the credits on Tubi, right? Oh my god. By the way, if you're if you're trying to quit soda, and you want to drink something healthier, drink Sevia zero calorie soda. They have a they have a, a dark cherry version uh, version that's basically diet like Dr Pepper. And it has zero cal- calories, zero everything. Oh my god! Which I'm not actually fuck fuck, fuck what I said. <laughs> I'm not getting. I'm not getting paid. I'm just saying I really like this drink, right? As somebody who's on a diet, this is a, like you know, this is a good soda to drink. Yeah. So yeah. What ha- and the other team consists of consists of Hitomi, uh, K- Detective Kirishima Hitomi, I think is her name, and uh, the other young detective on the team, which is Wakamiya, right? And they they were told to go and find find a psychic, right? <laughs> Which they're going they're they go to some guy in like archives and they're asking they're a bunch of dumb questions. Is there a psychic that's good at find uh, finding people uh, over the phone? Is there a psychic that's you know good at this or this or that? And he's like, no, there's no such thing as psychic like that. How about a psychic that's can find a killer in his dreams. So I was like, "Oh wait, we have a psychic like that," and that's where they get they get introduced to the main character, the other main character, the nightmare detective, who it, well, they go to his place and he he tried to they find him after a suicide attempt where he tried to like um, hang himself. Right? <laughs> oh my god! Right? Which it turns out. Um, because of how scary dream going to people's dreams are, um, you know, he, he, he's basically suicidal that, and he can read people's dark thoughts, right? 
So they go to him at first, but they, he tells them, you know, I, I want nothing to do with this case. But I'll warn you, I'll, I'll give you guys a warning. Do not fucking call that guy's cell phone, right? Cell phone number. Only for them to do it, and the one of the members of the team gets killed brutally, right? Right? Even with, even with the last minute help of, like, uh, the Nightmare Detective. Which the nightmare detective, like, when he goes into people's dreams, he he strips naked and he he only has his like black shroud that he wears, which gives him like which gives makes him look like like dream from this from the Neil Gaiman Sandman comics, which there's even like a Batman esque scene where the where inside the one guy's one character's nightmare, right. The, he's walking on the streets and he gets attacked by the, the, the by the killer, right? Which you never get a good look at him, but there's there's some body horror shit going on, and he has like a butcher's knife, right? That he use he uses, right? And the main it's it's they're on the street, and the main character is on top of a street light, and he glides down like fucking Batman <laughs> from fucking Tim Burns Batman. Which I'm supposed to fucking see that new Flash film, but I don't know for sure. But I, I'm supposed I have uh, I have friends that are supposed to go with me to see that fucking movie, and we if we don't go to see that movie, I'm fucking I'm gonna be fucking pissed. So there there's a little battle scene in the dream between our main character and the and the serial killer, right? Who is played by the fucking director? Did I mention that? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. And during the horror scenes in the movie, you have the industrial fucking rock music that fucking plays, right? That's straight up from like Silent Hill like downpour. I think Silent Hill downpour has industrial mu rock music, right? I can't remember. But very Silent Hill-esque music that plays in this fucking movie, right? Which just they should fucking get the they should hire this director to write and like to write and exactly produce a fucking Silent Hill game, right? Which I think the new the newest Silent Hill game that's supposed to come out is supposed to take place in Japan. Uh, so like they should fucking just get this guy, man. Cause he would have done he would he would do a good a great job. So yeah, our main character because it's a superhero movie gets his fucking ass kicked, <laughs> right? And only for uh, gets his ass kicked, and the co the cop that they use as bait gets killed. And to convince the uh, our theme of detective, right, is convinced that only the nightmare detective can defeat the the psychic vampire fucking guy. This is a serial killer, right? Um, but because he's scared, he he's suicidal, but he's still scared. He doesn't want to die in somebody else's dream, right? She decides to guilt him into fucking, fu into fighting the bad guy again by using herself as bait, right? Uh, only, uh, only for her to to almost lose her mind from insomnia because she doesn't want to fall asleep because she knows she's going to get killed by the uh, serial killer, right? And the the, the climax of the movie is basically. The same fight from the first, from the you know halfway point of the movie, but done again. But you know, our main character wins or lose, we don't. Know. Who knows? <laughs> I mean, we do know. I just don't want to spoil it. But you know, it is a dark superhero movie, so yeah, right. There's even a scene in the fucking movie where the where they're fighting, right, and the the villain goes to the hero. It's like you know, where you and me are the same. Right, which that that is a thing in a lot of superhero movies where you have like the the two, the the villain, the protagonist and the antagonist have like pretty much the same power set, right? Because they pretty much have the same powers. Is that for the one our main character doesn't turn into a fucking monster, right? Which the guy, which the serial killer does in the especially in the second fucking one, the second, uh, sorry, the second bait. Uh, bait trap, uh, you know, where he he goes like like it, it, it's fucking gross, man. It's fucking gross. 
Oh my god. So, I'm just going to go with my likes and dislikes for the movie. I like the premise. I like the aesthetics of the movie. Especially during the nightmare dream scenes. Right? Um, the music is good. The acting I thought was good. Especially from the main characters. Right? Except for maybe except for maybe the girl. The Hitomi. She wasn't that great. But I think she's probably a fucking pop singer. And now dislikes. Um, the movie's a little slow at times. Uh... If you're somebody who finds depression, the emo shit in the movie, emo shit, uh, cringe, <laughs> and you're gonna f cringe a lot in this movie, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. Also, a kid dies in the movie, not in real life. I mean, in the in the movie, a kid die, a, ki a kid character dies in a, a character's backstory, right? So yeah, that might bother some people. Um, yeah, so, but it, it, it wasn't, like, you know, super gory, which I forgot to mention, the movie is gory as fuck, which, you know, should be expected from the fucking guy who, who directed, uh, Ted Soul the Iron Man, and I, I don't know the other fucking movies he's done, uh, I mean, he did Ted Soul the Bullet Man, uh, he did Ted Soul 2 Body, Body Hammer, he did this one movie I forgot the name of, <laughs> That was fucking... That fucking sucked. Right? Which I don't know if he... Actually, he started. I don't know if he directed it. But he did, he did this very good um, short film. Which I forget what it's called. But it's like basically... Him... His, his character's in hell. And he has to... He has to go through this nor, narrow... He's going through hell through this n narrow crevice. Or whatever. Like... And it keeps getting tighter and tighter as he's... Getting pat, you know, pat, going through it, right? And there's some fucking fucked up gore in that movie as well. So I don't know. If I were to give this movie a rating, it has its problem. It has its problems, but I think it's a solid horror film. But it's not for everybody. So 6.5 out of 10. I probably should have fucking reviewed this movie in October, but you know what? The movie was leaving to be soon, right? <laughs> so next week, we're going to review a special. A special movie, which I don't want to spoil, but you know, it, it, it's a, it's a, it ju it's in the vein of Psycho Goreman, where it's like an homage to like you know, uh, to, like uh, Tokusatsu movies. All right, guys, peace.